Hey guys, I just ordered and received two of the brand new LV6548V inverters from MPP Solar. This is the improved version of their popular LV6548. In this video, we're going to take a look at what the differences are between the two inverters on paper and inside the units. We're also going to check the idle consumption of each inverter. We're going to talk about the new communications protocol that was just added and a special clearance event that's currently happening. Now the specifications of the inverter itself hasn't changed much. It's still a 6500 watt inverter. They did drop the high voltage DC disconnect from 66 volts down to 63 volts, so we did see a three volt drop in the high side. Uh, however, most of us aren't operating in the 60 volt range anyway. The biggest difference between the two units is going to lie in the solar charge controller. Now both of these units have a dual 4000 watt solar charge controller, so that's 8000 watts total, and each of those controllers is an 18 amp input. However, the old version was limited to 250 volts open circuit, whereas the new version is limited to 390 volts open circuit. And that difference is a huge win in my opinion. The 250 volt limit was a bit restrictive for cold climates by the time you factor in the temperature coefficient. You need to leave enough headroom when you do your calculations so that on the coldest day of the year, you're not going anywhere close to that 250 volt limit. If you do, you could damage and destroy your charge controller. That combined with the 18 amp rating made it very difficult to get anywhere near the 4000 watt limit per charge controller. So next, let's take them apart and see what the similarities and differences are inside. All right, so we have our two inverters side by side here. The inverter on the left is the LV6548. The inverter on the right is the LV6548V. And taking a look externally, they appear identical. We don't see any major changes. I don't even see a slight variant between these two inverters. We have the exact same removable display on the front here. The connections on the bottom of the inverter are exactly the same as well. We have four MC4 connectors for our PV input. Two sets of parallel connectors. We have two two pins and two DB15. We have uh, two punch outs for our battery connectors and two punch outs for our AC input. So if we remove both of these display units, now we can begin to see some characteristical changes here between the two. So we do still have the same terminal blocks. However, if you look at where the fans are, on the new inverter, we have two squarish cut holes on the right, whereas we have circular holes here on the old inverter. Additionally, I noticed that the PV fan on the newer unit is sitting down lower than the PV fan on the old unit over here. And uh, this is actually the same model fan. However, the fans over here are quite a bit different. So these are 1.05 amp fans. On the old unit, we have 0.9 amp fans. And I'm hoping that won't equate to a higher idle draw on the newer unit. Otherwise, everything else looks the same down here. We have the same DC input board, uh, the same parallel board, and the same PV board down there in the bottom. And unfortunately, we do have the same screw terminals. I really don't care for these terminals. I'd rather see some better connection points here, but... Uh... So next, we're going to remove the cover of each inverter. So other than the differences for the uh, fan height, I'm not seeing any major difference between these two inverters. They still look fairly identical inside. But even this top board here, which I do believe is the MPPT control board. So we have 16501415.01GA, and that's the same part number on the old unit. We have the same 10 gauge wire linking the MPPT controller to the high voltage bus of the inverter. Uh, we have the same large inductor on the inverter board and the same two smaller inductors on the MPPT controller. So next we're going to remove both of these boards and set them aside. And also remove the fan uh, baffle cover thing. On the new inverter, the MPPT is 16501419-01GA. And that is the exact same part number on the old inverter. So I'm not seeing what the difference is other than this different capacitor here in the back. Every other aspect of this board looks exactly the same in both inverters. Okay, so I've taken them apart further and I have figured out what the differences are. So this vertical board down in here is the control board. This is the brains for the entire inverter. It's going to control both the inverter side and the charge controller side. And the part number on the old inverter is 16-502-001-01GA. On the new inverter, we have 16-502-001-02GA. So that is a difference. 
Additionally, these two capacitors on the high voltage bus are different as well. On the old inverter, we have 315 volts at 1500 microfarads. On the new inverter, we have 500 volts at 820 microfarads. That means that the new inverter has a higher voltage high voltage bus. Now that makes me wonder if on the new inverter we're going to be slightly less efficient because our high voltage bus is higher than the old inverter. This one is presumably getting stepped up to around 500 volts, whereas this one was getting stepped up to around 315 volts. So roughly speaking, that's one and a half times more. I cannot spot any other differences on the circuit board, so I assume it's simply the software on this control board telling both the inverter and the MPPTs to step up to a higher voltage in the new inverter versus the old. That seems to be the only difference from my perspective. Of course, as usual, I am not an engineer. That's just what I can see in here and what I can point out to you guys. All right, so we have the original LV6548 hooked up to a jack per server rack battery. And I wanted to do this test really to get an accurate reading of the amount of power this inverter is consuming while it sits idle. Now I have measured that in the past, however I used a clamp meter, which provides a good estimate, but it's not as accurate as a shunt based reading. Uh, the battery is on, the inverter is off, and we're at zero watts, so we're going to go ahead and start up the inverter. With the inverter started up and running, we're sitting at 65 to 66 watts of idle power consumption. So now we have the new inverter hooked up, the LV6548V. Same setup, I'm gonna go ahead and power it on now. It does sound a little bit louder on the startup. Whoa, 109 watts. For one inverter, 109 watts. That is unacceptable. I figured it was gonna be like five, maybe 10 watts more. 108 watts. So if we do 108 minus 66, that's a difference of 42 watts for one inverter. Most people are going to be using two in a split phase configuration. So that's a difference of 84 watts of self or idle consumption times 24. That's two kilowatt hours per day extra. This new inverter is going to pull versus the old inverter just so you can have the additional 120, 130 volts of the PV input. I don't even know what to say to that. That is a complete deal breaker to me. I mean, even the Ames low frequency inverter was only 140 to 150 watts. And this is going to be about 70 watts more. So next let's talk about the communication options with these inverters. These inverters are advertised as supporting RS-232, RS-485, and CAN bus communication methods. The most popular of those options is the Pylon Tech protocol, which uses RS-485 in these inverters. The problem with that is most newer equipment is moving to CAN bus communications. So for example, I very much wanted to interface my Batrium BMS with these inverters. Batrium is more than willing to build out that protocol. However, up until recently, these inverters have not supported CAN bus properly. They advertise supporting CAN bus, but the only protocols built into these inverters that support CAN bus is the uh, WECO, and I believe it is Solatro, and those are closed source protocols, so neither company will provide the specification for those protocols, and you can't really find anything about it online, other than one single forum post where somebody has spent the time to reverse engineer it. So I've been working with that to try to figure out how I can get control of these inverters over CAN bus communications. Now some of the others out there, like the Sun Gold Power, also advertise CAN bus communications, but when I reached out to them, they told me they don't support CAN bus and it has to be customized. I'm thinking, wait a minute, your sales website says you support CAN bus, but now you're saying you don't support CAN bus. So where I'm going with all this is as of quarter four, 2022, MPP Solar has published a new firmware on their website that enables CAN bus support, proper CAN bus support on these inverters. That will work on the LV6548 and the LV6548V. However, the inverters, according to the manufacturer, have to have been produced in quarter four of 2022 or later. I did hear from a third party that there was something to do with CAN bus royalties to Bosch or something like that that ended, and I'm thinking that may have something to do with why their inverters haven't supported up to now, but I couldn't find any information to validate that claim. When you load this new firmware, you'll see under setting number five of the inverter, you have a new option that says LIA, and that's the CAN bus communication. Now we already have an LIB and an LIC, so logic would dictate that this LIA existed 
long before quarter four of 2022. However, I have successfully loaded the firmware to one of my LV6540 inverters dated April of 2022. The option does appear in the settings and it does appear to be broadcasting the same frames with the LIA setting as on the newer LV6548V. So whether that protocol actually works and I can communicate with it, I haven't quite gotten that far yet. However, it appears in my opinion, not to matter. So take that as you will. Now, the last part of this long ramble is that while MPP Solar published their firmware, it took me two, maybe three weeks of back and forth with this company through email. They didn't know what I was asking at first, and then they provided me with RS-232 documentation and then RS-45, and I was going in endless circles. And then eventually I had asked, is there an engineer that might know more about this information? So finally they had provided me with a PDF document. They're advertising this feature, but they know nothing about it when you raise a question with support. Now I will give them credit for this because they were very responsive. They always got back to me either the same day or the next day, keeping in mind the time zone difference, which is a very acceptable, a very acceptable response rate in my opinion. And obviously I'm not authorized to speak on behalf of Batrium. However, I will say that I've been working with them to get something together in terms of communication between the two products. So we'll see what comes to the table in terms of that here soon. Lastly, if you're interested in purchasing these inverters, Current Connected has a large inventory of the LV6548s. They're trying to clear out this inventory. They have discounted it significantly below what other companies are charging to the point where they're actually losing money on this deal. They currently have the LV6548s listed in their savings shack for $910 with free shipping. That does come with the catch though that they're not providing support or warranty on those inverters. So do keep that in mind. If you want the warranty and support, they do sell the same inverters. Uh, at a slightly higher price. Currently, there are no US distributors of the LV6548V. You can order them from MPB Solar directly or they do have an eBay store, it's Maximum Solar. I think that's their store or it's at least an authorized distributor. I will leave links to both of Current Connected's listings and the eBay listing down in the video description. And the final conclusion from all of this is that I waited nearly a year for this new version of this inverter to come out and I am very disappointed. I knew this was coming, I was purposely waiting for this new version because I figured, oh, this is great. I can finally rebuild my solar setup, replace the aims, replace the charge controllers that are out there currently. However, this is a deal breaker. I can't take something out that's idling at 150 watts and put something in there that's idling at 220 watts. That's not the direction I wanna be moving in. So, uh, so I'm gonna have to put some serious thought and reevaluation into my plan here. Um, I may move forward with putting the LV6548s out there as long as I can get that communications protocol to work, even though it's dated before quarter four of 2022. And now at the end of the long ramble, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those. I love the interaction. I love to hear what you guys have to say. Hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.